for you. Yes, I guess first off, just start with uh, your review of spring ball and being here on the mountain and uh, how things have gone so far. Oh, it's been great. Um, I love it here at Liberty and, um, you know, from, from practice one, up to the spring game. I'm just seeing the guys get better and competing every day, buying into what um, all the coaches are preaching. Um, it's a good sight to see. And uh, when you got everybody on the same page, you know, you can you can be a really good team. Hey, Darius, I wanted to ask you about uh, coming here from Georgia State. Obviously, your connection with Jack Curtis. Uh, was he your position coach at Georgia Southern? Yes, sir. Well, yes, sir. He was, he was my defensive coordinator for two years, my junior and senior year. My junior year, I actually was playing um, outside linebacker nickel position, um, and he was coaching the safeties. And um, I always tell this funny story, literally like a, a month before fall camp started, he asked me and another teammate of mine to move to safety. And you know, it was all about whatever's best for the team, and, and it was a good opportunity, and, uh, and uh, worked out best for, for everybody involved. So he actually coached me. He was my position coach as well, my senior year at safety. Uh, so when you, uh... Did, was he part of the group that approached you about coming to work at Liberty, and did that familiarity help you knowing you're going to be playing in a scheme that he's co-coordinating and you'll know how to help these DBs work with his safeties, linebackers, and the yeah. defensive line? Yeah, 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 sir. That was a big part, um, you know, having that relationship. I've been knowing Coach Curtis again since I was um, 20 years old, so basically almost 10 years. And um, I've always kept a relationship with him through my, you know, playing, playing days professionally up to my, my coaching days, um, which would be my fifth four, fifth year as a full-time coach. So, you know, for him to, you know, have enough belief and faith in me to be able to come here and get the job done, you know, I greatly appreciate that. And, you know, I love playing for him. And, you know, I definitely, through these first 14, 15 practices of spring ball, you know, I've enjoyed coaching alongside with him as well. And then I've heard nothing but great things about Coach Freed's him and Coach Aldridge as well, the other co-DC, and um, it's great. I'm, I'm really enjoying it, and, it's, and you know, you spend so much time around the staff, you know, so you always want to make sure that you're going to work with a group of guys that you get along with, and that's the case here. As working with this particular group, you got seven players in your in your room. How have those guys been buying into what you've been teaching them from technique? Because I've noticed in practices after – most every play, you're going up to one of them and working with them. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the thing. Um, you know, I'm, I'm very anal about the little things, and and in, in, even on a great play, a good play, you know, when you get back and watch the film, or if I see it out there on the field, I try to show them how they can be even better, how we can execute even better. And um, but those guys, I, I really do love coaching those group of guys. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, it's a pleasure to be their coach, and they bought into everything that I've um, asked of them. And every day after practice, you know, after we get done praying it up, I always tell them that I do appreciate that they come in and work and grind and, and do what, I, what is asked of me and um, our graduate assistant coach, Coach Brown. How, uh, if any of those guys stood out for you this spring and in terms of where they started when you got here to where they hardened out through this 15th practice? Yeah, I mean, all the guys have, have gotten better along the way. I mean, that's what you like to see as a coach. You know, we go, sometimes we go in and, you know, one of my best feelings as a coach is when I see a guy mess up on something and then the next practice, he corrects it. Like, that's that, that's a proud moment for me as a coach. Um, but, you know, we got a lot of, we got some experience in the room with Chris Megason and Dejon Anthony, who's played a lot of football here. Um, you know, with those guys, I preach to them about being consistent, never getting complacent, you know, because when you've, you know, play so many reps, play so many games, you know, practice eight, practice nine of spring ball can be kind of repetitive. But, you know, to me, those will separate the good players from the great ones that still come out there and attack the practice. Um, Amarian Williams, he's, he's done a great job this spring. He's been, to me, one of the most consistent guys from practice one all the way to the end of spring ball. And, um, you know, he's a young guy. I'm definitely excited to see him continue to develop. Um, Kobe Singleton, um, transfer. He, he's he's done great out there when he has had the the time and the, and been good to go out there and practice for us. And um, think he'll be a guy that continue to develop and be able to help us as well as this season. Um, Dexter Ricks Jr., who's you know technically still supposed to be in high school right now, but it's definitely been a great to see him um, progress throughout spring. You know, from practice one to the to the spring game and and um, seeing his development. And um, Deion Big is going to continue to to hone in, and you know he's he's one of the most athletic guys I've ever been around, and um, you know just want to see everything connect for him. And then we also have Elijah, who's um, come in, and you know he's been good with the reps that he's been able to get. So overall, 
you know, I just preach to my guys being consistent, you know, being disciplined, you know, I discipline, being consistent, playing with great pad level, um, playing with great feet, because uh, that's what we do. We cover with our feet first and then playing with your hands. And we've seen, like, a lot of the position groups, they like to rotate guys in throughout games. Mm -hmm. I know you haven't gotten into a game situation yet, but do you want to have four or five, six guys each week to be able to rotate oh, yeah. in? The more the merrier. I think that's always great when you got multiple guys. You don't want to just – definitely with the spread game nowadays and tempo, you know, it's tough out there sometimes for a corner having to run. You may get, you know, six, nine balls, deep balls back to back. You know, I do believe in having depth. And um, that's my job here as a coach to, to develop guys to be able to, hey, I can trust more than just two or three guys to go in there and help us win. You know, the more we have, I'm, I'm definitely willing to, to put those guys out there. But like I talked to my guys, it's all about trust. And, and that's something that I've gained from them and vice versa um, throughout this spring. And one thing Coach Curtis talked about with us a couple of weeks ago was about spreading the stress. And I guess when you watch film from last year's team, you saw a lot of man free, cover three. Uh, looks. How is transitioning to two high safeties, maybe some cloud coverage? Mm -hmm. How have those guys, especially the corners who were used to playing sort of on an island, how have they bought into a, more of these zone looks to really help them out? Oh, they they love it. You know, they love it. They, they love playing man as well. Um, and you know that's 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 the great part of playing corner. It's just me versus the man across from me. Um, but. But, you know, we, we do um, talk about that spreading the stress and, and um, how the guys, the calls that we do have where we're actually spreading that stress, the guys love it, you know, the guys love it. But they, they've bought in, they've been great with everything that from myself to Coach Aldridge to Coach Curtis that they've asked. And, um, you know, I just want to continue to develop those guys and continue to, you know, make us the best unit that we can be in the back end. How much of a say do you get in terms of working on the game plan in terms of, about coverage, about whether you know these guys can be great in man coverage, or whether you need to play more zone based on the looks you have from the, from yeah. the other side. Yeah, and that's it. Every offensive team has a tendency, um, and it's my job to go in and throughout the week just really study a team and what they like to do. And every coverage has a beater, you know. So it's okay. It's, it's a chess match. That's what it is. At the end of the day, um, us making the right calls at the right time. But when you know certain teams' tendencies based off splits, based off formation. You know, they can give you the upper hand on the game plan. And I guess another question for you, you brought this up in your opening statement. How have you adjusted to life in Lynchburg and especially with this coaching staff, um, you know, with you know, guys who have been around each other for a few years? Mm -hmm. um, it's been great for me. It's been great. Um, you know, in the, in the coaching profession, you know, it can require a lot of moving. So I kind of joke around with people all the time. You know, this time last year, and I was still living in Alabama. This is literally my fourth state in the past year that I've lived in, you know, and, um, and, and it comes with it. But every opportunity has been a great one. And again, being able to come up here and coach with a, with a guy alongside a guy who I've played for, have so much respect for and can be able to learn from, um, you know, it was, it was just the icing on the cake. And again, this staff is, is, is great. So there's always connections, you know, like me and Coach Garrett, you know, the new defensive line coach, we kind of knew know some of the same people. You know, he came here from coaching at Cle Cleveland for the Browns. And I used to play there, so we always talk about, you know, stuff that may have changed between when I was there to when he was there the last two years. Um, but, but again, you know, you, you, you spend so much time in the office and you want to make sure you're spending around some good people, and that is the case here. I wanted to bring up with you, with you and Jeremy joining the staff this year. You know, Coach Freeze brought in people who had NFL experience, whether it was you playing, uh, Jeremy coaching. How much has that helped in terms of the two of you know what it takes to play at the next level about helping hone in those guys so that way they can play and prepare as if they are at that next level? That's it. Um, you know, we just preach the little things. You know, at the end of the day, football at any level is football. You know, it doesn't change. It's about your technique, your 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 willingness to your willingness to compete and um and then that's it from pop one all the way to the NFL. That's that's it. I don't think it's no it's no magic formula to it. You know, I always and I've told the guy, I say, listen, everybody in the NFL isn't a freak athlete. They they're not. I wasn't, <laughs> you know, but everybody has something that they can bring to the table and you have to make sure that you're great at whatever that is. Uh, last one from me, uh, you're working with the corners. I think previously you'd worked with safeties at your previous stops. Yes, sir. How much different is it coaching corners versus safeties for you, or is it similar 
in terms of how you're teaching technique and everything like that? Yeah, that, that's really it, the technique part of it. Um, you know, when I was at Georgia State last year thinking about safeties, you know, we talked about technique, but you also talk about making the checks. I always tell my guys, you're the quarterback of your side of the field, so you have to make the coverage check. You have to be ready to also fit the run more so just as much as you're covering the pass. Um, and thankfully, you know, this wasn't my – this isn't my first year ever coaching corners. Last spring while I was at Samford, um, I coached the corners there as well after moving from the safety, safety position. Um, so, but, yeah, that's the main thing. Cornerback, you know, it's more technique-driven, you know, and um, as far – and with safety, it's more so uh, making the checks, making the calls, still technique, of course, and you're going to be more involved in the run fits.